Welcome to Shop Talk. This episode kicks off with a very special moment. The time has come to finally place the Alucab Canopy Camper on the Tundra to finalize the wrap. This camper is going to dramatically improve our livability and productivity in the field as we shoot the upcoming Nordic series. Now with the camper mounted and the wrap complete, it heads back to the hangar for final fitments of the equipment inside and out. We can almost see what the truck will look like on the expedition to come. And theoretically, by the end of this weekend, the final look of the build should become a reality, though the details of the build will still have a long way to go. Good morning and welcome to the Saturday edition with 13 hours and 13 days, 14 hours, 39 minutes and six seconds to go before this truck needs to be completely finished. Today it's Saturday and we have our saving grace here, Parker, who's around there somewhere. Dark Horse sent over Parker on a Saturday. I'm pretty sure Scott told me don't advertise this because this isn't like a normal thing that they would do, but they are saving our bacon today to get the rack put on. Parker's their best guy, does some of our best work we've ever had. And then, uh, so we're going to put on a roof rack today. Uh, the CBI, well the Prinsu roof rack, uh, does need to be drilled into the roof. We've done those before over the years. Uh, so. The fear is gone, but it's still a thing. And this is only the second one, as far as we know, that's been put on a Tundra at this point in time. So uh, while that's being done, the boys are gonna be working on putting the water tanks in the Alucab, and then we're also gonna be trying to get a front bumper and a winch put in today. Uh, yeah, so it's a big one. So that's what today's shop talk is all about. First things first. Mount up the Prinsu roof rack and install the classic XO alley boxes on the roof. I think it's good there if you go in the middle. Pull them in the slot. Yeah, yeah. They went in the No! Under the fender. Uh oh. Like, straight under all of them? Yeah. We're what the around. world? <laughs> Dude, those aren't coming back. Maybe just pop the hood. Maybe they just. Man. Yeah. Gone forever. You lucky dog. They're all right here. We're right there. We're right We're. there. Thinking maybe we open this bad boy up. Hop into our CBI front bumper. I have a man tool. fins there. I don't think that, there's no instructions for this stuff yet either because this is like this is the they built two of these at once one for their truck and one's for ours. All right so that's for the lights which we don't have yet and look at those welds look at that if you if you know welding you know how that's pretty great especially you get up into that corner get enough contact in there and then put a bead in there like that that's pretty awesome. Nice work, CBI team. Oh, long 
hole. <laughs> just tickle up. <laughs> you see double layer? That one, yep, you can see it, but I think it's deep enough that the nuts are, will clear that. So I think we're in business. So while they're out there mounting the roof rack, I'm in here trying to get this water tank put on. I had to, I had to like clean out horse trailers and cattle trailers and spray out horse poop from my dad's projects. You're bolting things on state-of-the-art trucks. How's that feel, Cyrus? How's yeah. that feel? Yeah? Feels pretty feel, great. Feels pretty good? <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, congratulations. Okay, so me and Peter finally got the stinking water tank in place. It took a little while. Now we just have to put the hose in and it's good to go. All right, so a quick update on the roof rack getting on. It's, it's fully mounted on there and it's looking really good. Uh, so we're just getting on easy on, quick attach for the classic alley box on the roof. Just finding the right fit for them. Get all the bolts in. Next up, CBI's front bumper needs to be assessed. Here at XO, we are blessed and cursed with prototype equipment. I wonder if this thing gets put back on somehow. It doesn't. We're gonna take this off. Okay. So this is a mat that's air dam. Uh-huh. It's all gonna come off. Okay. And the vehicle's okay with that? Or? Nope. <laughs> it throws a lot of codes. Does it? Okay. <laughs> so all these new trucks, uh, the Tundra's, Many of them have the air dam system, so at certain speeds, this thing drops down and it prevents more air from going under the vehicle, increasing its aerodynamics, which increases its fuel economy. However, when you go to put bumpers on it, you can't utilize it, so you got, you got to delete it. And then a bunch of codes come up because this is unplugged right here. So then you have to work around what's called a defeat. Um, so we're just going to pull off the sensors right here, unscrew the sensor part and plug it back in and zip tie this back behind the bumper somewhere and hopefully it defeats all the codes. We don't know if it'll work but we know it's going to throw codes without it plugged in at all. If not, we'll have to work around it some other way or work with Toyota to get rid of it down the road. Uh, the thing to do would just be to plug it in right now. Yeah, and see if it <laughs> just see if it turns on. Key support brake malfunction, SRS airbag system malfunction, pre-collision system malfunction. Uh, but we have a lot of stuff unplugged. I don't see anything about an air dam issue. We'll get PVC pipe. Something that that'll fit in. Yep. Black PVC. Seal it up. Mm -hmm. Zip tie it into the frame. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was just looking right there. You would never know. My exactly. fix for this is when got a four inch PVC. This all fits in here just so. Put a cap on the bottom. Cutting a hole out the top so I can fish this through. I'll cap it. Then I'm going to shoot it down with some waterproof patch and seal so it's all black and hides. And then this will come out the top. The computer thinks it's all working right, but it's just in here doing its thing. And then I'll put this side, I'll tape all this up, but I'll put the side of the hole down so it wants to drain if it needs it. The front air dam at this time is still an issue. Sadly, our quick fix didn't work. The only thing that happens now, though, is a screen warning that the air dam is malfunctioning which makes sense because we removed it. But the good news is we are working closely with Toyota engineers to find a good solution in the software. So stay tuned.
Parker's done a great job of getting the bumper mounted and the winch in on the base plate in there. This is a very cool system. I haven't seen CBI put a system out quite like this yet. It's very, they're stepping up their game. It's pretty cool. But uh, for us, we're not gonna finish installing all of the stuff like the winch line, the fair lead, and the Factor 55 termination that we're gonna put on the end of this one until we're completely done with the whole process. Uh, we're still waiting on our rigid light bar to come in. So once we know that we're not gonna have to take this bumper off again, then we'll do it all at once, put it back. But it looks cool. It's nice to have a 12,000 pound winch in there and a lot of reinforcement on the front. It's a good setup. I'm excited, it looks good. There's only a few days in a build where you see things move so fast, and today was one of those. Getting the roof rack done, oh, it started with the alu cab and then the wraps, that changes the truck a lot. But then once you can get the roof rack on, the alu boxes, start to see the lights, and then get the front bumper put on, it has completely changed the look of this truck. But yeah, I've made huge ground today, thanks to you, Parker. Yeah, no Thank problem. you, and Dark Horse Customs, obviously. Great skills over here, I learned a lot from him today, just watching him work, and, uh, but now it's time for bed. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> Sound good? It's a big day. That works for me. Thank hey, you. No problem. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Let's, let's go have a beer. Okay. <laughs>